Hi everyone, Cody here, and welcome back to my lab. So, to the chagrin of some and uh, the relief of others, I will not be working on the vacuum chambers today. Instead, later, I will be going on a red-eye flight over to New Hampshire. I'm going over there because about six months ago a school emailed me asking if I could come give a talk and visit some classes. Now, I love doing that sort of thing, so of course I said yes. At the time, I didn't really know that it was on the other side of the country, but since they're paying for my flight, I figured, why not? So since I'm getting on an airplane, I figured I'd do some sort of experiment related to flying. And I have one in mind that I've always wanted to try. You see, I've heard that uh, being on an airplane, you should actually be a little bit lighter. You should have less gravity on an airplane than you do here on the ground. It's not going to be a lot less. In fact, I figured it was around 0.3%. But 0.3% on something that weighs, say, 300 grams would be about a gram, which would be totally easy to measure. Now, unfortunately, my precision lab balance, which is accurate to plus or minus uh, 3 milligrams, is a little bit too big to bring on carry-on. So I'm going to have to use something a little bit smaller, something a little more portable. And so I have this uh, little uh, digital jewelry scale here. And this is not the best scale. In fact, it's about 10 times worse than the lab balance. This one's uh, accurate to plus or minus about 30 milligrams. It is a pretty high-end scale for its size and it should do pretty well. Now it has a capacity of 500 grams, so if I have something that's somewhat less than that but also fairly large, I should be able to detect a one gram difference pretty easily. Now the object I chose for this is actually this one inch tungsten cube. I chose tungsten because it's very dense and it's got a lot of mass in a small area. This weighs around 300 grams, and yet it is very small. Now the idea here is that it's small enough that uh, airport security isn't going to you know, flag me as carrying a blunt object that could do harm, even though I imagine this would do quite a bit of damage if this hit someone. But also tungsten is not magnetic, it uh, isn't going to be affected by magnetic fields. The density of course is going to make it so air pressure changes aren't going to have much of an effect on its weight. And tungsten is very hard, so I can scratch it and rub it on things, and it's not going to lose any metal. Now, uh, my fingerprints and stuff, unfortunately, are going to cause its weight to be a little bit off. But this scale, being as inaccurate as it is, uh, fingerprints are really not going to be a problem. I'm, I'm looking for an effect that is much larger than fingerprints, or even air currents, really. So, let's get some base measurements. And then let's take it on an airplane and see if we can uh, measure the weight of the cube up in the sky. So here we are in my living room, and uh, this is the counter where the, the TV is sitting. And I'm actually going to just uh, weigh this cube right here. Let's see what we get. So 295 grams almost exactly. Let's get a few more measurements so we can get sort of an average here. Because this scale does have some variation. And its accuracy. So you can see maybe just a slightly less than the 295. All right. Let me actually uh, try something just to make sure this uh, tabletop here is level. So let's uh, open this uh, app on my phone. You can see that yeah, it's pretty close to level. I'm probably going to use this on the airplane as well just to prove that the uh, the tray table is level. Is that being unlevel will cause the scale to mess up. See if I can just move this up a little bit. See its weight changes, especially when the block slides off. But you guys get the idea. If something's on an inclined plane, it will have a different weight. Uh, another thing that's maybe going to be a problem with the plane is if the plane's doing this. I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to film for a minute or two at a time and then get like an average. But anyway. Uh, I'm gonna go get packed and we're gonna head to the airport and get on the plane. Shaking 
think what I'll do is just like uh, take a bunch of readings at different points and then take an average. Gravity is stronger here. So the difference in weight between this cube in Salt Lake City and this cube in Manchester is about the same as the weight of an empty sugar packet. See that? About uh, 0.2 grams. It's not a lot, but it's definitely there, and I'm inclined to believe the scale. That is far too much to be just a calibration error. That is an actual number difference. Let's see if temperature had any effect on that scale. So it's been in here for about two hours. So it's cooled down to probably around 38 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's turn it on. Let's see what we get when we put this block on there. Okay. So if it did change it, it didn't change it much. Still seeing about 20... You know, 0.2 heavier. Okay, it's time to see if after a 4,000 mile round trip, it still weighs the same. And it does. Look at that. It's exactly the same. I'll take a little bit of an average here, but it looks like, yeah. 295.01 seems to be about the average. <laughs> so, there you go. The cube actually changed weight at the different weighing locations. That is cool. So, I wanted to know just how much of the weight change is due directly from altitude. So I'm actually going to go drive up the hill, you know, go up Logan Canyon here, and uh, go up the same elevation difference as we had from going from Logan to uh, down near sea level. So uh, we should be able to weigh the cube again, see if the uh, cube, it should weigh less, uh, see just how much less it does. Now, we're not really changing my latitude very much, and uh, the density of the rocks are all about the same here, so. Let's uh, go find out, shall we? Okay, so I'm up at the Bear Lake Overlook. You can see the uh, lake down there through my back window. And I'm as close to the summit as I could drive to. I think this is uh, just under 8,000 feet here, so not quite as high as I'd like, but should be decent enough to notice something. So here's my level. You can see that it is indeed leveled on this uh, board that I got here on the front seat. Let's put the cube on the scale and see what we get. Okay. Right about uh, 29495. So it has lost a little bit of weight. Let's do this a couple of times just to get sort of a average here. Yeah. 
How about that? That's the least it's weighed the entire trip. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> so it looks like it's lost around five to seven uh, ten one hundredths of a gram. So that's you know fifty to sixty milligrams. So now that I've got all my data in, it is clear that the cube lost about uh, 60 milligrams of weight by traveling upwards uh, 3,000 feet onto a mountain. That means that uh, going from Salt Lake to Philadelphia, that's about a 4,000 foot elevation difference, I should expect to see around uh, 70 to 80 milligrams different, which is very close to what I actually saw. But it does not explain the reason why Concord, New Hampshire, I saw a 200 milligram increase in weight. And the answer to that is simply that the materials of the earth that's made out of are not constant. You see the density of the rocks beneath your feet in Concord, New Hampshire is more than you would have in Salt Lake City. You see uh, in Salt Lake City you've got mostly limestone and sandstones, mostly sedimentary rocks. In New Hampshire it's actually the granite state and you have mostly granite. And uh, granite is less dense than limestone. Wait a minute. If granite is less dense than limestone, and there's more limestone here in Salt Lake City, shouldn't you expect to see more gravity in Salt Lake City than New Hampshire? Well, the reason for that difference is, is actually the granite is an indication of something else that is going on deeper into the earth. See, back when the Appalachian Mountains were forming, you had uh, Europe and North America colliding together and there was oceanic crust between them that got subducted and so that oceanic crust now when the uh, continents split apart and the new oceanic crust is forming you've got a large chunk of the oceanic crust sitting underneath of the east coast of the United States and that has been sitting there for slowly melting away for the last several hundred million years. Now uh, on top of that as it melted and as the, the process of the collisions happened you know, granite was formed up near the surface, but deep down below you've got that really dense oceanic crust. And oceanic crust is actually denser than the mantle, so you've got a high amount of mass in a small area, which creates a gravitational attraction. Now what about the cube's weight on the airplane? Now fortunately, measuring on the airplane was very difficult because the plane wasn't flying perfectly level. I mean, it was pretty close to level. The pilot did a very good job, but tiny perturbations in the air and would cause the plane, so instead of going perfectly level, it kind of, you know, bounced around a little bit as it flew through the air. You know, these, the magnitude of these bounces were like one part in 300, but of course that's about the same as the differences in gravity that I should be expecting. So what I ended up doing is actually filming the scale for about a minute, and then I went through and I took the video, and that every second in the video I wrote down the number from the scale. This way I could get an unbiased list of uh, weights over time. And I take these, average them out using Excel, and that should get rid of the small up and down motion that happens in the plane. And from that I found that while well, flying east, the cube weighed 1.384 grams less than it did on the ground in Salt Lake City, and flying west it weighed 0.582 grams less. Wait a minute. Those numbers are pretty different. You know, there's a, there's a 0.8 gram difference between those two numbers. And the reason is, is because altitude is not the only thing that was causing the cube to weigh differently. It was also the fact that it was going around the Earth. You see, the Earth is a big sphere, and so if you, you know, rotate that sphere, or have something going around the sphere, you've got a little bit of a centrifugal force pushing out, or, you know, the object wants to continue in a straight line, and, it, and in order to continue going around the curve, it has to supply some extra force to hold it down, which comes from gravity, which means the total effect of gravity is a little bit less. So, that means that uh, traveling east, your speed of the airplane is adding to the velocity of the cube going around the planet, so that ends up being about uh, 1,270 miles per hour while you're going east, and going west it subtracts from it, 
so you end up with only 170 miles an hour going around the world. I calculated the centrifugal acceleration uh, for those two uh, different speeds, and I found that going east I should expect 1.5 grams, and west about 0 0.02 grams. So there is a pretty significant difference between going either direction. Now, since the plane was eight kilometers higher than Salt Lake City was, you know, the plane was cruising at 36 to 33,000 feet, uh, the difference in elevation should cause a gravitational change, which is 0.74 grams, which uh, centrifugal force on the plane going west is almost non-existent. And so all of your decrease should actually be due to the uh, distance from the center of the Earth. So point 582 grams, um, that's probably within the margin of error here. Uh, you know, maybe the plane was traveling slightly down over the entire collection period, which is totally possible, but I, I doubt it would be a huge effect because, you know, the pilot tries to keep the plane fairly level. So there you go. There's a lot of things to take into account when you're measuring the weight of this cube. You know, the cube's mass did not change, at least not a whole lot but its weight certainly did. And I think it's crazy that I was able to measure that using just a, a little scale and putting the cube on it and weighing its difference in the different locations. Like of course the, the school and the geology department when I was taking, uh, uh, when I was uh, taking geophysics, uh, we actually used equipment that was you know, tens to possibly even hundreds of thousands of dollars to do exactly what I did here. Of course, the equipment used for actual geological studies can measure the difference in gravity between here and here, but same thing. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Well, it's insane. Oh, man, yeah, look at that. No, we really don't. Like, this is a classroom. Or the, or the solar. <laughs> 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 Dr. Cohen is making progress on turn this on. Okay, so it forms the bridge almost immediately there. So now if we can pull this apart really slowly. There we go. Yeah. Maybe yeah. stop there. Just let it build up a little. It does build up, doesn't it? Yeah, so like let it go for a minute. Cool. Let it stop there.